Hey, it's Russell Graves from Hackberry Farm here, and I just got back from a farm auction where I picked up this great three-point sprayer. Now, it had a few bumps and bruises on it, but for the most part, I think it's gonna work great. When I got it home, I had to replace a few of the hoses, had to replace the, uh, the, the spray tips in it, but for the most part, it's a pretty solid piece of equipment. And as I was going through this, I got to thinking about the piece of equipment realize there's a lot of parts to a sprayer even though they look simple they've got a few moving parts that if you understand correctly it makes your maintenance chores a lot easier and it also makes the setup of spraying a field like i'm about to do a whole lot easier as well in this video we're going to talk about all the parts that come on a sprayer and the function of those parts and how those parts relate to one another so that you can get liquid from the tank onto your field whether you're fertilizing a field or whether you're weed killing an area this video is gonna help you understand what all the parts are for. So let's look at the first part. And the first part is the tank. Of course, this is where it holds the water and the liquid and the fertilizer or the chemical mixture that you may use as a herbicide or, or any other kind of spray application. And the tank is mounted to the carriage and the carriage is really the bones of the whole operation. And the carriage actually on this tractor fits to, to the three point uh, hitch. You can buy sprayers that go on the back of a side-by-side -side or on the back of a four-wheeler or even in the back of a pickup. But this particular one, and this is the one I wanted, hooks to the three-point. I've got a sprayer that goes in the back of my side-by-side, -side, but I prefer this one because it's got a bigger tank, twice as big a tank, and it's just got a bigger spray capacity. And I'm able to modulate how fast the tractor goes a whole lot easier than I can on the side-by-side. -side. And so from the tank is where it holds the liquid, and then down here we have the roller pump. Now there's a couple of different kind of pumps you can get for these sprayers. One is an electric pump that runs off the battery, either your tractor or off your side-by-side -side or whatever it is you're driving. But on this particular model, I've got a roller pump and this roller pump actually works off of the PTO on the tractor. Now you'll notice here, this is rigged a little bit, but this is the, the pump is actually wired to the tractor. And what that does is it keeps the pump from spinning around in circles when you engage the PTO. But this one actually runs off a of PTO and that's what the turns the roller pump, which helps pump the water from the tank through the system. And so if you notice, the water gets pumped from the bottom of the tank, which that's where the gravity helps it flow down there. It gets pumped from the bottom of the tank through the system. And as the hoses come up here, it goes into this T. And from this T, you're gonna notice a lot of things attached to it. Number one, the first thing we have is this pressure gauge at the top. Now, the amount of volume that you spray on any particular application is a function of the type of spray tip you use, number one. Number two, the ground speed you're going or how fast you're driving. And number three, the pressure that you dial into the whole system. Now, out beside the, uh, now outside the gauge, you see this mechanism here. And what this mechanism is, is the pressure regulator. And so, if my tips call for 20 PSI on a sp particular spray application, this is where I'm gonna adjust the 20 PSI to. So, the way this works is, as this whole system gets pressurized, you can increase or decrease the pressure just by turning the end here. And when you turn the end, it's gonna let some of the fluids go to the rest of the system, but then it kind of goes to the next point. And you see where this, this uh, pressure regulator has this hose coming out of it and what that hose is is the bypass hose now you may be thinking why do you want to put water back in the system because that's what the bypass hose does it takes the liquid and it runs it back into the system and the reason for that is pretty simple if you've got this dialed in say for example to run one gallon a minute through the spray tips and the pumps actually going in a gallon and a half a minute then that half a gallon has to go somewhere and so what it does is when it hits the pressure regulator the amount of fluid that can't go down through the system gets bypassed back into the system. And so this is a whole closed loop system. And so the, you've got some of the liquid that's gonna go through the, ultimately through the tips and spray out, but what's left, what the system can't handle based on the PSI that you dial in, gets recirculated back through the system. And what's good about that is, if you have any kind of chemical in here, it's gonna help keep your whole solution mixed up better as you spray the whole field. And so, on the other side of the pressure gauge, we have the on and off valve. And the way this one works, it's pretty simple. If it's down in either direction, it's gonna let liquid go through the system and spray out the tips. If it's up, that's actually off. 
And so when I'm heading to the field, I always make sure that's up. Even though my pump's not running, I'm still gonna make sure the system is off so no liquid accidentally drips off, especially if you have some kind of herbicide, no liquid accidentally drips off on, into the pasture. And so I'm gonna make sure that's up. And when I get out and I engage my PTO and the system starts running, then I'm just gonna reach back and flip that down and uh, liquid should come out of the tips. And so the next part as we go down, we have, and this is a, a, a just a diverter valve here. This particular sprayer has a hand one. If I want to spot spray an area, I can just use the hand one instead of spraying out of the tips. And then uh, I, all I've got to do there is if I want to turn on the hand one is turn this on off valve to the off position, turn that valve on and it lets the liquid, instead of going through the, the, uh, the boom on the back, it lets the liquid go through and come through the hand one. And so as the liquid flows from the on off valve, it's going to go all the way back to the back of the sprayer to this area, which this is called the boom. Now, if you'll notice, it goes down to this T where the spray gets equally distributed to a couple of different spray tips out on the end, as well as the one in the middle. Now, in all these things will do this particular sprayer will do about 10 feet wide, but these booms come in all kinds of different configurations. For example, you can get a boomless nozzle and it'll do a really wide spray and you don't have these booms sticking out. On some of the big commercial agricultural sprayers, these booms will go out to 40, 50, 60 feet wide. They're huge. But this particular one will do about 10 feet wide and that's about right for the applications I need. But as it travels down to these fittings, you can actually take these fittings apart and it has a little nozzle inside there and also has a strainer and these strainers keeps the keeps the uh the gunk and stuff that may be in the tank out of your nozzles and keeps your nozzle from clogging up now these no nozzles come in different configurations as well you know depending on what kind of spray output you need and how big the overlap needs to be uh is going to determine what kind of nozzle you need so every application is a little bit different but that's the overall setup for these sprayers They're pretty simple you know there's not a whole lot of parts to it but next time you have to work on your sprayer sprayer you'll at least have a better understanding of what all the parts are and what the, how they contribute to the overall package